With the founding of the Albuquerque Real Estate Board and expansion of the city limits by 1930, Albuquerque realtors and developers were in a position to provide for growing housing needs. However, as development began in the East Mesa, the Great Depression affecting the whole country brought an abrupt halt to the nation's employment. For two years, Albuquerque escaped the worst effects due to its geographic location and lack of industrial base. Before that time, major construction projects were already underway, including the VA hospital, the federal courthouse, the Albuquerque Indian Hospital. These projects and others kept the Albuquerque economy afloat in the early years of the Great Depression. Beyond these big money projects, local residents began to feel the stress of business closings and job shortages. Even the city's major employer, the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railway, cut back as did agriculture and mining industries. The situation worsened in 1933, when Albuquerque's National Bank, the city's most influential financial institution, locked its doors, throwing the city and state into crisis. For many, the 1932 presidential election of Franklin D. Roosevelt was a watershed moment. FDR's New Deal policies with its collection of federal agencies were put in motion and within two years, positive effects were felt across the country. Locally, it was Clyde Tingley, city commissioner, an ex-official mayor of Albuquerque, who figured prominently in New Mexico's economic recovery. Tingley was elected New Mexico's governor in 1934 and used his personal connections with the president to secure thousands of dollars in public work funds to kickstart the local economy, build necessary public facilities, and put residents back to work. By the mid-1930s, a major number of construction projects were underway. What began as Terrace Park was renamed Roosevelt Park. The state fairgrounds and the widening of the Central Avenue to six lanes. The municipal airport, Scholes Hall and Zimmerman Library on the University of New Mexico campus. Albuquerque Public Schools utilized federal monies to build four elementary, two junior high and one high school. Civic projects included the City Zoo, the Albuquerque Little Theater, the Monta Vista Fire Station and Tingley Beach. Highway construction included Central Avenue Bridge over the Rio Grande, which realigned the U.S. Highway 66, making Central Avenue its main thoroughfare. This changed the city's primary traffic corridor from a north-south alignment to an east-west orientation that would forever affect the development of the city. And then as you go further east, gridded streets, gridded streets, what happened here? They're all at a skew at angles. Same thing down here at Parkland Hills. These were uh, developed and designed by S.R. Dubois, who was a uh, landscape architect out of Denver, very well recognized architect. And he, f he noticed that when you had uh, squared off streets that didn't recognize drainage patterns that were natural on the East Mesa, you would tend to get major flooding in houses as well as in, in house lots. So he took the natural drainages, this is an arroyo, and made a campus boulevard so that when it flooded, it, the water would run right down the street. He was also the designer of Parkland Hills. And in this case, he took what was kind of called a city beautiful movement idea, and he created this Parkland Hills drive that went all the way around the uh, subdivision and then put streets at odd angles to configure into this uh, city beautiful, which wanted curvilinear streets, uh, streets that uh, maintained a, uh, a kind of uh, decorative uh, view of different angles of the city or the mountains. And so he didn't like just straight gridded streets. Um, so this original area of, Park, of Parkland Hills is that design. Later on, there was infill. This wasn't developed over here until after the war. And then they went back to gridded streets, but it made odd angles with the original design, which were filled in by little green areas, parks. Housing developers, including past Albuquerque board presidents, Charles McDuffie, R.J. McKenna, Kenneth Balcom, and Percival Glacebrook, put to good use the hundreds of thousands of dollars of federal funds spent on infrastructure that expanded water and sewer lines, paved new and existing streets, and installed curbs and gutters in the East Mesa. 
McDuffie continued to lead home construction in the university area. By the end of the decade, over 140 additional homes have been built, which fueled growth in the local home building economy. Two prominent citizens, A.R. Hebben Street and William Kelleher, had acquired the large Hewning Castle addition and now began its development. The centerpiece of this planned development was the Albuquerque Country Club, and its clubhouse of Mediterranean styling set the tone for the neighborhood's architecture. Suburban expansion was also beginning in North Valley, where pasture lands, although far from downtown shopping, conveniences, appealed to home buyers seeking a rural, urban lifestyle. In 1937, development of the first public golf course began at 4th and Montano, but was never completed. By 1940, its 55 acres were developed as a subdivision, and although outside the city limits without access to city water and city sewer, real estate broker Ross Merritt and his group established building guidelines and restrictions to appeal to home buyers. The housing development just was unabated. A, a national magazine in one uh, article said that it seemed like every week a new subdivision popped up on the, on the Mesa out of nowhere. And they were being filled. This wasn't just uh, a lot of empty lots or empty uh, houses. They were filled quite quickly. By the late 1930s, political unrest in Europe was heating up, and the U.S. Army Corps developed a training base in Albuquerque. Improvements were made to old runways and new facilities were built for the Albuquerque Army Airfield. It accommodated flight training, bombing ranges on the West Mesa, and weapons testing in the Manzano Mountains. This facility, later expanded, would have lasting effect upon the city's growth. In 1939, the Albuquerque Real Estate Board changed its name to the Albuquerque Board of Realtors. <laughs>